Hi, this is Eric Slack with the Evaluator Group. And the open storage platform is an architecture for building storage and compute infrastructures using uh, independent software and hardware components. Um, it leverages uh, several popular concepts in IT. Uh, the concept of scale-out topologies, which is a, a node-based modular architecture that's common in storage systems. Also, uh, software defined, which is uh, really common uh, in the storage business and in uh, what we call software-defined storage, as well as software-defined networking and uh, software-defined data centers. Um, the, other, the last thing is, uh, is the concept of commodity hardware, uh, which is the use of industry standard server chassis as a way to save money. The open storage platform originated in web scale and hyperscale companies. Um, these are the social media and web-facing businesses, cloud providers. Um, these companies had uh, enormous amounts of data that they had to manage and and store, and so they needed um, big storage and big flexibility, and they had to also um, had to maintain the cost containment uh, when they were building these infrastructures. Um, it was clear that, that traditional storage arrays were, were not going to uh, gonna provide the, the kind of storage they needed. So what they did is they used low-cost server chassis and filled these with disk drives. Um, and uh, this, this really created the, the commodity hardware movement where um, new storage products uh, have, are, are rolled out in, in server chassis as opposed to uh, in, in a software format that users had to install. Um, in order to make these, uh, this, this new architecture work, these companies um, wrote special software that abstracted the capacity uh, that's resident in each one of these modules uh, into a, a virtual pool. And in this kind of an architecture, resiliency was maintained at the cluster level in the software and not at the hardware level in each one of these independent boxes. Um, th they really uh, kind of used a sort of expendable, replaceable hardware philosophy instead of uh, one that, that utilized redundant designs that most uh, traditional IT infrastructure has used. Yeah, and um, the, the IT community was really kind of enamored with, with this, this kind of an architecture. The, uh, we, we sort of call it the hyperscale dream. Um, I mean, this, this thing really made sense on the whiteboard for, uh, for the IT folks in, in, in enterprises and in, in, in smaller companies. Uh, but th the problem was is that enterprises really weren't set up to do what hyperscalers did. Um, th they're really set up to, to, uh, for operations and not really for development. Uh, what they need are commercial products um, that, that are installed and implemented and supported by the, the companies that develop them, they're not really set up to do the development that the hyperscalers were. Um, OSP really makes, really makes this work. It, it's, it's a roadmap or a recipe that enables uh, enterprises to kind of live their hyperscale dreams. It, it takes a kind of a roll your own approach instead of a do it yourself approach that the hyperscalers did. Um, it, it lets companies use commercially available software components to assemble systems instead of having to develop the complex software that's required uh, like the hyperscalers did. At the Evaluator Group, we're publishing research into this new area of storage uh, that helps users to design their own OSP systems and plan their OSP deployments, whether they do them internally or whether they use an integrator. And vendors are also using um, this research to develop their own OSP components uh, to serve this new segment in the storage industry.